Hello, everybody. I'm really happy to see that you all shared your expertise because that's exactly what my talk is going to be about. And you couldn't even stop talking about it. So I, I know this is going to be exciting. Well, my name is Karin Jensma. I work for an organization called PUM, Netherlands Senior Experts. And what we do is we work with people who have gained more than 30 years of business experience in their lives, Dutch people who want to share on a voluntary basis their knowledge with entrepreneurs around the world in developing countries. Entrepreneurs who need that knowledge to uh, grow their business, to take it to the next level, but who don't have the means, who don't have the money to pay for commercial consultants. It's all about expertise, and that's what I'm going to tell you tonight. Um, I'm going to show you a little video first. It's a video shot by Mark Gee. He is a New Zealand photographer. He has uh, an enormous amount of experience in, in photography, in filming, in uh, well, everything he, do he does. He knows everything about the camera, the lightning, positioning. And he knew that one night a huge moon would come up and would rise over a clear horizon. So he went out and he put his camera there and he waited what happens. I'm going to show you a little bit of that. Here you see the moon coming up and Mark is actually standing two kilometers away from the fence. He was struck by what happened. He didn't know that people would be walking back and forth. It was just, you know, happening. And he took that moment and he took his expertise and he put his camera there and he created this amazing movie. I won't show you everything of this movie. It will take a bit longer. But I just want to um, tell you that this is the reason why we should make better use of our expertise. Mark was doing it already. And there's so many people that can do it as well. I mean, everybody here, you just shared all your expertise with each other. And you can also share it with other people around you, here in the Netherlands, with your neighbors, with your friends, but also in the developing countries. Expertise, if we share it in an organized way, in a structural way, it can indeed be time-changing. And I want to introduce you to a couple of people. And the first person I want to introduce you to is this man, Ari de Bond. He is a 63-year-old man. He um, is a businessman. He has his own company, and he is a fish farming technological well, expert. <laughs> he uh, set up his own company in the late 1980s when the demand for fish was increasing enormously. Everybody wanted to start eating fish there then for some reason. And he also figured that, well, you can't keep on fishing uh, because at one point there's no fish in the sea. So what should we do? We should all go into fish farming. And that's the time when we saw that big fish farming companies started to uh, come up. And he, as an engineer, as a background, decided that uh, that would be his future. He could help those fish farmers create new technologies, um, look at filtration, circulation, anything technical. You have to ask him. He has his own company, and he's had it for um, a long time now. And he decided six months ago that he wanted to hand, hand over his company to his two sons. It was time. His sons were enthusiastic, and they were eager and willing to take over. And Ari said, I want to step back a little. I want to not commercially use my knowledge anymore, my expertise, but I want to now share it on a voluntary basis. This is another man I want to introduce you to. This is Awaid Lagari. He is a fish farmer from Pakistan. And um, you already guessed, he has a farm that uh, has some issues in management, in production, in, well, a s a sort of problems that um, any fish farmer would come across in Pakistan. Um, he is using, he's applying um, traditional fish farming technologies as many of his fish farming colleagues do in Pakistan. 
And in the last couple of months, he noticed that his fish weren't as big as they used to be. He also noticed that um, he couldn't get a very good market price for his fish anymore. And he thought, what is going on? I need to find out because my company is going into red figures. So he went around. He uh, visited his fellow fish farmers in the area, but also they didn't know what was happening. And he went to the big city and he met Salim. Salim is my colleague, a uh, local representative, uh, working and living in, uh, in Lahore, in Pakistan. And Salim told him about PUM, my organization. And he told him that in the Netherlands, there's people who are willing to share their knowledge, their expertise, with people in developing countries, entrepreneurs who need that business, who need that expertise to grow their business. Well, it seemed like an enormous opportunity to him, especially because he couldn't afford a commercial consultant. And he heard from Salim that he would only have to pay for board and lodging to have this man, Ari de Bond, come over to him for two weeks and to uh, help him with his problems. So, you already guess, a couple of months later, the two men met. And this is when they first met, they sat down, they drank tea, they talked about the business all day long. Ari was listening and yeah, hearing the stories about the problems and already thinking, like, how can I help? Um, but of course, he wanted to see the whole business as well. So the next day, they went out. And um, they looked around the ponds, the area. Actually, there's three big ponds. And there's lots of walking involved. Uh, and they, they looked at everything, the fish quality. They did some sampling of the water, sampling of the fish. By the end of the day, they sat down and they discussed what needed to be done. And Ari found out that there were three things that actually could be improved with the knowledge that he had. First of all, he noticed that the fish was only fed once a day with a rice type of product. And well, that was new to him. He'd never seen that before. And he was also thinking it's, it's like a, not a very varied uh, diet, so to speak. Secondly, he noticed as he took the samples that the water wasn't that clean. And also, uh, there was not so much oxygen in the water. And fish, of course, need oxygen as well. If they don't get enough oxygen, they get stressed. They don't grow. And well, this was already one of the reasons why the fish wouldn't grow. The third thing that he noticed was that there was only one type of fish that um, Lagari was using. And if there's a problem with this one type of fish, okay, what are you going to do? Would you, do you want to put all your eggs into one basket? So he thought it would be much better to start experimenting with different types of fish. And that was also his advice. Start looking around and experiment with different kinds of fish. And he, Ari, had been in many places around the world and he knew what types of breeds there were and what could be suitable for this farm. He also advised to give the fish a more varied diet so that they would become healthier and they could also, also extend their health to the people eating them. And lastly, he advi advised to use um, a technical way of putting adding oxygen to the water. And here you can see what they did. They used, um, I don't even know what they call this, but they used um, a thing to, uh, <laughs> to uh, add the oxygen to the water. And it ha this had to be done a couple of times uh, a day, actually. Well, Lagari had, um, a white Lagari had um, 36 people working for him. And well, within a couple of minutes, this was a couple of hours, I have to say, this was, this was done. And it could be done um, more extendedly if they could, um, if he, he could make a bit of better profit on his uh, fish and then afford for more appliances to be bought. So Avaid, of course, was very happy with the advices he got. And he started implementing immediately. Uh, Ari left after two weeks, but they kept in touch. They kept um, using email, Skype, and uh, it's now six months later, actually. And uh, we already see that the fish is growing. And it's not going like one day to the other, but we see that there's a, an improvement here. 
And Avard Lagari is so happy, and he wants to share this also with his fellow fish farmers. He wants Ari to come back, uh, because he wants all the fellow fish farmers, their colleagues, to also know what can be done with the knowledge, state-of-the-art knowledge that Ari was willing to share. And he wants his fish farm to be a model farm, so Pakistan can increase its fish farming level, uh, fish farming technology to the, to the next level. And I think that's beautiful. That is... Um, a perfect example of how expertise that is just sitting there, but is used in a different way. is not used in the environment itself, uh, but is taken out of the environment and is applied to new situations. It's recycled, it's reshared. And um, that's why Ari is my hero. It is only one example of uh, the many projects that, that we do, but I think and I hope that Ari inspires you guys as much as he has inspired me. Because sharing your knowledge is one thing, recycling is the other thing, and even upcycling, yep, adding more value to the knowledge that you, that you already have, the expertise that you have, is the best thing. So the knowledge, the expertise that you just shared together, think about it. Can you share it again? Can you share it with your neighbors? Can you share it with people anywhere that need it? And I would... Uh, I would say yes, and I hope you, you will. And thank you. I just want to finish with this little movie. It's the end of it. Just to share it with you a little bit more. Because if you can do it, anyone can do it. Jump on that moon, share your knowledge, and there are no losers here. Thanks. Three, two, one, ready.